a lot of medicines cause weight gain. We know that um, they can be significant. Listen, guys, 10 to 20 kilos of weight, easy with certain medicines. I've seen it time and time again, and then you stop those medicines, and it's amazing. People start losing a weight, and it's not like they're even trying. So, you know, that in and of itself should talk to you about the bio, the biological basis for weight gain, right? You know, the fact that medication, you can just take a medicine and gain weight, not because you're necessarily doing anything different, but because you have a medicine that's affecting your biology. Okay. Uh, we should have a conversation about that. It's clear to me that it sounds like there's a biological basis for it. It doesn't sound like it's uh, my inability to exercise or do enough cardio, but a lot of people still make it out to be. Okay. How do you explain the gain, the gain of weight with steroids? Is I'm just not doing enough cardio? Is that the problem? I'm not dieting hard enough? Yeah, that's where I have a lot of problem. There's so many different examples that demonstrate the biological nature of, of weight and how weight is regulated in the body. As it relates to medications of any kind, whether it's for weight loss, depression, you know, high blood pressure, whatever it is, there's going to be a variable response, right? So I had some people very angry at me in the comments saying, you know what, I gained weight on the medicine or I lost weight on that medicine when you said it, it was the other night. I'm very clear when I talk about the way people respond or potentially respond that um, this may cause this. This is more likely to cause this. If you look at my language, the way I word it, I never say this will, you know, um, and guarantee that because that's not good science. And we know science, people have variable responses. So uh, with that said, if I talk about something, it's usually coming from an average response, which is what is reported in studies. So I think that's very important because as it relates to a lot of the questions you guys asked me, is this medication right for me? There's no way for me to say. You may be someone that doesn't respond at all to a medicine that other people have a tremendous response to. And so that's something to think about um, when you guys think about medications, when you assess how you're responding to something, you may be the one in a hundred that doesn't have a response and everyone else does. And that's just the unlucky thing. So um, something to think about um, just in general with your medicines, there's no guarantees at all for anything. Um, in, in science, biology is incredibly complex and biological systems vary um, pretty dramatically um, on their ability to respond to certain things. It can be. There is no rate of weight loss that is normal or abnormal, okay, um, per se. Uh, everyone's different. Uh, there are always caveats, like I said again. There are always caveats. Nine pounds in three days. Most of that weight's coming from water and something called glycogen, which is your stored form of sugar in your body. Not, it's not coming from fat. So you're likely losing more water weight than anything. So um, it's uh, you know you don't lose fat that quickly. Fat takes a much longer time to lose. So the nine pounds is mm, probably a fraction of it. It's actual fat. But I would talk to. I mean, if you're having symptoms, then I would be concerned. So that's almost always a good indicator if you're doing something too intensively is, you know, how does your body feel? If your body feels okay, that's usually a good sign, it is, is, you know, particularly around weight too. If you're feeling better, you're having more energy, you're not feeling as bloated, you know, um, all those things are usually good signs. There's very little evidence to suggest timing of, of your, the day impacts your ability to control your weight. There is some evidence that it may impact how sensitive you are to insulin and the response of insulin and how responsive you are to carbohydrates. So people typically become more insulin resistant and less glucose tolerant later in the day. So you're most glucose sensitive early in the morning. What does that mean? That just means that you can handle a large load of, of sugar, carbohydrate, um, and deal with it very well and dispose of it appropriately in tissues. If you don't handle it as well, your blood sugars may be slightly more elevated. Um, and, and that's the case later in the day. Does that mean that you shouldn't eat at night? No, that's not what that means. And frankly, when we look at timing, really has very little to do with weight in general. There may be a small effect, but for most people, the timing of their meals has very little to do with, with whether or not they're gaining or losing weight. So I decided to do this because 
when I was in my second year in training, I was undergoing my own personal transformation. If you've seen my transformation video, uh, where I talk about how sort of sick and uh, tired I was and all of these things, I was depressed, I had all these issues going. So I, I basically got fed up and I was like, man, I, I know a lot of the science behind this. Like I want to try and do it and transfer my life. And it, it was really hard. I really struggled at first, but I stuck with it and I eventually got better at it. And I learned more about the science and my pursuit, my own personal health. And, um, and I got really passionate about it. And along the same lines, I also became passionate about it in my day-to-day -day patient care. I really started to talk to people about their weights in very, I think, very compassionate ways. I, I'm much more uh, empathetic now than I ever was. And, and so that was, that was a, the impetus for me to get to really dive into it completely. And I got really frustrated towards the end of my second year, early third year in my residency because I kept seeing this system that was devised to treat people and, and to be very reactionary. And so it was, it, was it was developed to treat people when they get sick, but it wasn't developed to help people get healthy. It wasn't developed to help people prevent things from getting worse. It was really just set up to put out fires once they came up. And I was like, why is our system created like this? Why don't we look at the root cause of a lot of these issues? Why don't we address the insulin resistance and metabolic disease before it turns into diabetes or heart attacks or strokes? Why don't we help people manage their weights? There are all these really effective treatments. And so for me, it was like taking a hard look at like what I was doing. And I was, and, and I, I became really passionate. I mean, even more so than I was really passionate about addressing this one problem because I saw so many common pathways converge um, on metabolic disease and obesity, which basically share a common pathway and um, at least the common forms of obesity do. And so I was like, listen, guys, why don't we look farther upstream? Why aren't we asking the hard questions? Why don't we add, why don't we work with people to help them live better lives? Why not? Why just keep prescribing medicines? Let's, let's, and so, you know, um, my stance and my understanding has continued to evolve as my appreciation for the science has grown. Um, I think what I used to feel more strongly about was like, I think we're over prescribing medications. And I think in primary care, I do agree to, uh, with that to some extent. I think we, we often, once again, just prescribe medications to put out fires and we don't address the primary issues. Where I, where I think my, my um, philosophy and my approach has changed as it relates to helping people manage their weight is really understanding the biological basis for, for uh, people struggle with their weight and understanding that oftentimes medication is necessary to lead to meaningful weight loss. And that diet and exercise alone is often inadequate. So um, while there are about 20% of people who will respond to lifestyle changes, um, who can do like a program like Noom or Weight Watchers, and they can lose considerable amount of weight and keep it off the rest of their life, 80% uh, of people won't be able to do that, guys. Like if that doesn't blow your mind, I mean, this is data we have now dating back decades. If that doesn't blow your mind, it makes you question everything we do and the way we approach people's weight. When 80% of people, we're offering them treatments that are going to be ineffective in the long run. You know, when we tell people diet harder, um, eat less, eat healthier, when that's not going to work, it doesn't matter how hard they diet, it's not going to work. And I don't need to tell you this. You guys are telling me this, right? How many times have you guys tell me every new consult that I get is someone who has spent many years or a lifetime trying to get on top of their weight. And it's not for a lack of effort, despite what you would hear in the media suggesting that people don't know what they're doing. They're not trying hard enough. They're lazy. All of this crap, right? All of this crap that you hear, all this rhetoric, um, that's not based in evidence. So, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, my, my one thing that's changed is understanding the value of medicine and helping people manage their weights. And this is where I get so excited and you guys comment on my enthusiasm because it's real. We're seeing this inflection point, guys. If you've, re if you've watched any of my recent videos about some of the newer medicines, there is this inflection point where the ability of these medications to work is doing this, right? Like we're seeing the development of medications that are absolutely going to change the game as it relates to people managing their weight. Um, the newer medicines that are coming out, the newer medicines that are in development, I mean, if you compare them to what's on the market now, 
they're like two or three times as effective in terms of the amount of weight that's lost. That's crazy. So like, uh, there's a lot to be excited about on the horizon. And we're talking about in the next year, the next two years, certainly in the next five years, there is going to be a handful of new medications that will be offered to people for all of these things. And I think, and I think, and I hope, because I'm involved in some of the public outreach and some of the public policy related aspects of this, that people will see this type of medication has real value, can really help people manage their weight, and it will change the perception. I think it's going to start really changing the perception when we see people and a number of people get on these medicines and then train, change their life. So I, I think that's really exciting, guys. It's very, very exciting. Yeah, I've talked a lot about it. I think the one that's uh, soon, that's that's coming out, that's sort of pending, is the newer semaglutide medication, the one that's dosed 2.4 milligrams. Um, so th it doesn't have a name right now. I suspect knowing how pharmaceutical companies work, because semaglutide is already available to treat diabetes at a lower dose called uh, Ozempic or Ribelsis, those are the two forms, they're going to rebrand it and then sell it as weight loss, uh, as a weight loss medication. So they can charge more. <laughs> That's how they work. So um, I suspect it'll have a new name, but it's it's the the generic name is semaglutide. Semaglutide, someone asked, is that the same thing as Saxenda? It's not. Saxenda and semaglutide are from the same family of drugs called GLP-1 agonists. They're different drug, uh, drugs within that class. So Saxenda is something called loraglutide, semaglutide obviously being a different name. So um, how can one find out about clinical trials? Oh, this is a great question. How can you find out about, um, how can you enroll in clinical trials too? Because then you guys can get, um, potentially get access to these things early on. Um, and I know that oftentimes if you enroll, they have benefits so that people can get the medicine after the trial is completed. So they, they, they definitely like, they appreciate your investment in progressing the science so they, that they um, do that. Um, I, would, I would look at the company websites. I think that might be the best place to start. Um, I could tell you a very nuanced way, but it's probably not gonna be helpful for most. Um, go to the, uh, and maybe I'll make a video on this. Now that you guys are mentioning that this is like actually really interesting to me. Um, go to Novo Nordisk, two words, Novo Nordisk, uh, N-O-V-O, N-O-R-D-I-S-K, Novo Nordisk. They're the manufacturer of semaglutide. They're still doing a number of semaglutide studies around the country. So, um, and they're looking at it for PCOS. They're looking at it for pediatric obesity. They're looking at it for infertility. They're looking at it for um, a number of conditions. So you can be involved in these studies and you can go to their website and find out where these studies are happening and then find out ways to sign up. Um, Eli Lilly is the other company that's uh, coming out with a lot of these drugs um, that are uh, coming through the pipeline. Eli Lilly, uh, you may be familiar with that name, may have seen that drug name or drug company name. So that's another company that has a lot of really exciting drugs on the horizon. They just finished phase three. Uh, I believe it was phase three or phase two. I think it's phase three with their last study. And it was really positive, encouraging results, very similar to semaglutide. Actually, an even more impressive improvement in blood sugar too. Blood sugar in the people that were on the new drug called terzepatide, which I really need to make a video about this. I think it will, you guys will uh, share in my excitement. Uh, this drug called terzepatide, which is from Eli Lilly, it's their new diabetes and obesity drug. Um, it dropped people's A1C by 2.5%. 2.5%, a single drug did that. And by the way, people lost uh, more than 12% of their body weight alone just by the drug. So, you know, crazy, absolutely nuts. Um, some of these drugs that are, that are coming out and uh, really exciting stuff. Really, really exciting. It's going to change the game going to absolutely change the game, guys. Um, there's no doubt about it.